the co-chairs of the Dubuwin Implementation Committee in charge of implementing the Yakubuchi Report requested that the Office of the Provincial Advocate for Children and Youth bring together First Nations youth to talk about Ontario's justice and juries process. The Feathers of Hope team reached out to First Nations youth across Ontario to be part of this important dialogue. On November 17, 2014, more than 150 First Nations and Métis youth from across Ontario arrived in Thunder Bay to add their voices to a discussion of Ontario's justice system and juries process. On November 20, 2014, these young people and First Nations champions met with municipal, provincial, and federal government officials, First Nations leadership and police at the treaty, provincial, municipal, and federal levels to share their views tied to justice and juries and their hopes tied to creating a justice system that is reflective of and responsive to the needs of First Nations people. So we're here in Thunder Bay and we're waiting for over 150 kids. We're here for a form that covers justice injuries. So for the next three days, we're gonna have youth running around this hotel in workshops and in home groups, looking to discuss and find solutions to issues they may have with the justice system. Right now, we currently have over 100 young people from all across Ontario. And so that means a lot of flying and a lot of driving all across the province. I'm from Onigaming First Nation, Treaty 3. I am from Six Nations. Big Trout Lake. Fort Hope. I'm from Toronto. My home community is Kettle Point. Mikizi Sage Gun First Nation. First time with Thunder Bay. This is the furthest north I've ever actually been. In fact, I'm city boy. Yeah. <laughs> It's always very nerve-wracking leaving your community or going to a conference with a lot of strangers. I was a little scared, nervous, and a little overwhelmed. <laughs> this Feathers of Hope Forum, it's for the young people, by the young people. We just want to make sure that this is, you know, not scripted, we're not putting words in their mouth, but the youth, they're here for themselves and they're taking the first step in being leaders. Day one of the forum, it's powerful. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Today of the forum is just booming, booming with energy. Welcome to Feathers of Hope, baby. Come on, let's hear you. They have a voice. And a lot of these young people never realized they had that powerful voice. But here, it's completely out of this world. And during this time, and tomorrow, the day after, and years later, your determination will not waver. You will keep fighting. You will keep talking. You will scream. Use your energy to do great things. What I like about this place is that these young people are able to share, and it's safe for them. Right off the bat, when they came here, they were very excited about the, like, the forum. Uh, we could see um, that they were really eager to talk about their issues. I can say for myself that I didn't really know much about the justice system or the jury system, and I think this is a good educational forum for everybody. My first workshop I went to be, was uh, creating vision for the jury process. One speaker today had like some very practical advice on how to deal with police and how to safeguard your rights. Even though it's just the first day, I feel like I've learned a lot. In order to ensure that there's true justice in our communities, young people have to be a part of the conversation as early as possible. So some of the core issues that came up included the overrepresentation of Aboriginal peoples in the criminal justice system. The John Howard Society did a report that outlines the statistics and they're quite shocking. Another issue that came up was the relationship between First Nations people, First Nations youth in particular, and the police in terms of over-policing, things such as racial profiling, being stopped, feeling like they were harassed, 
Also the idea of under-policing, meaning that when they reached out when they needed police to help them when they were victims of crime, they didn't get the help that they needed. Another theme that surfaced throughout the course of our discussions was the issue of education. Education in terms of those that are actually participants in the justice system about Indigenous peoples. Knowing our history, our traditions, who we are, everything that we endured in terms of colonization. That's really, I think, what the root is of the discrimination within the legal system, is that it's a foreign system that came here that was never meant to incorporate or to even consider Indigenous legal traditions. And this system's been forced upon us, and we're really trying to find our way. And you sense that with these young people. I'm from Toronto, and I'm a youth amplifier. An amplifier amplifies the voice of young people and makes them feel empowered and gives them the opportunity to raise their concerns and really use their voice. That is my top choice, is like definitely a youth amplifier because I studied Indigenous learning, I have my Bachelor of Arts and um, I'm working on my honours right now and it's just what I'm really passionate about and really want to work on are some of the contemporary issues that, you know, face Indigenous people. I decided to take on this role because I've had a passion to help First Nation youth since I was young because I myself has went through certain barriers. That's why I signed up and I really want to see change for our youth. Like I um, grew up feeling very ashamed of who I was and I just want a new generation that doesn't have to feel that way and I see that already happening. I see a lot of pride in the youth that are here. I have um, a goal set and it's to make people smile. So working with First Nations youth is kind of um, it, it's an, enabled me to spread my smile. So the experience involves multiple things. So we do workshops, which is educational, and the chance for them to voice their opinions on the themes that we do have. And then we have fun workshops, which allows them to have fun and to get to know their, um, their friends and the people that are around. It's not a Feathers of Hope forum without having fun and being a so vastly involved in play. And so we want to make sure that while we're talking about serious issues, we're also having a lot of fun time. It's extremely important for young people to still, to stay true to being a young person. For the past couple of days, the youth have been in their workshops, in their home groups, coming up with plans on how to better the relationships between them, their communities, and the justice system. So they've been working nonstop at these presentations, formalizing and taking all the information that they've learned and shared and heard, and the formulating it in a presentation to the table. At the round table, there will be First Nations leadership, um, provincial and federal government, local dignitaries and decision makers. The young people are going to be speaking their truth this afternoon. They can hear presentations from the youth that they um, worked on throughout the week. Lots of people have never even spoken in public before. It's, it's a little scary, yeah, but nothing that we can't handle. Our young people over the last couple of days have been gaining context. The context about justice, the context about juries. They weren't asked to think outside the box. Our young people were asked to think inside the circle. And over the next few hours that we're together, our young people will be pouring out their hearts and souls to you. Well, I hope to get our word out and hope they understand. 
I hope that the government will consider this and it will make a change. You're about to hear 11 beautiful stories from 11 amazing groups totaling 150 young people representing tens of thousands of youth from across this province. There is a reason why I'm here this week. This was all meant to be. In the past few days, I learned a lot about justice and juries, of how we Aboriginals are being treated. We should be treated as equals. We come together as one. That's our goal, right? To be equal. We feel that if we have a healthy relationship with the justice system, then we can get rid of discrimination and we can start creating a better future. We, as Aboriginals, have had more negative experiences with the police and justice system rather than positive experiences. Of course, Aboriginals are going to affiliate brutality with police when we are only seeing the violent side of officers. Communities need cops who are involved within the community. Police officers that are working with First Nations communities or First Nations people in general take sensitivity training just like high school teachers would have to in high schools. And we would recommend to have uh, a conversation with a group of Indigenous youth and a group of uh, officers um, out of uniform and off duty. You may agree that there is much work to do and it cannot be accomplished by only one person. But please realize that we are powerful together. We believe funding these ideas could aid us in our communities, in our homes. I feel as a First Nation woman, proper education is key. Proper education for not only ourselves, but for the people who are the judges, lawyers, policemen, and women of our community. The importance of the cultural history being brought into the educational system is critical. Aboriginal history is Canadian history. We as Indian people have always been here and will continue to be here. So let's build a bridge with our sisters and brothers of all races and hope that we begin to work as a healthy community and have equal rights for everyone. Miigwech, thank you. It is my recommendation that the institutions that monitor and investigate police misconduct be strengthened or more realistically replaced because the current institutions that are in place are plagued with a culture of ineffectiveness that is not easily reversed. This allows police officers to commit acts of misconduct with impunity. This creates an animosity towards police in First Nations communities and fosters distrust and an attitude of non-compliance with investigations and conditions set by the court. We also need to reevaluate the mechanisms by which we ensure judicial accountability. First, in making sure Crown prosecutors make an earnest effort to prosecute police officers in instances where misconduct warrants criminal charges. Furthermore, judicial accountability should be increased to ensure justices of the peace and judges adhere to the Gladue principle in bail and sentencing hearings. In a in a, in a meaningful and not only superficial way. On that note, it is my further recommendation that more funding be funneled toward research of the phenomenon of net widening, especially in relation to the current trend in judicial circles of assigning conditional sentence orders in cases where incarceration would not be appropriate, even without the influence of the Gladue principle. Thank you. The friends that I've made, I will hold close to my heart because they made me believe that I have a purpose and that we can get through anything or do anything we want if we stand together. Miigwech. Together we are, friends of all. The youth at the forum, they're very powerful, so I felt their energy. The experience has been actually really good. I enjoyed it. What happens is they start this ripple in their communities. I'm hoping to become like a good youth representative once I get back to my community and like bring what I learned here to the youth there. In a way, I guess the end result is that the empowerment that is, that is brought back home. Like I do plan on taking a lot of what I learned back to my community, back to the youth council and sharing all that. I like to go back having a strong voice. I, I eventually want to go to law school. I'm halfway through my university degree and I'd like to apply it to my hopefully my future career as a lawyer. 
So the fact that they're able to communicate and connect and share energy and gain energy, and it's just, it's so inspiring to see. This is not only to better the lives of Aboriginal people and Aboriginal young people for that fact. This is the first step in bettering the lives of all Canadians and how we can all work together. Listening to people speak and how they got to where they are today, that makes me like, yes, that makes me believe that, yes, I can do it, I can do it. When we came here, we had no idea what was gonna happen or what was gonna go on, but we're so privileged to come here. I feel happy about the things I've learned, the people I've met, and I just feel overall happy to be here. Uh, this week was awesome. I met lots of new people. I learned lots of new things. Uh, and I'm really glad that I decided to come because it was a life-changing experience. I teared up a little at the end there. Especially when we walked by, we did like a handshake circle with all the people that attended. And like I could see that a lot of them were emotionally touched, which kind of got me. That's what got me all choked up. And yeah, it was, it was just really rewarding and like exciting and yeah, exhausting again. I'm like ready to pass out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah.